what's up today we're going to discuss what is the erc1155 nft standard now if you don't know what any of that means don't worry i'll explain but i hope you know what is erc721 nft which is like a regular nft where you know one token can be owned by only one person and what's a token it's a combination of the smart contracts address and a token id i've discussed ERC721 NFT uh, in my previous videos which I'll link somewhere up on the i button but today we'll talk about ERC1155 where one token can have more than one quantity and therefore one token can be owned by multiple people basically each piece from that quantity can be owned by one person what is the motivation behind this why did we even create this kind of nft i'll discuss all of those things but today we will not get into code we'll just understand how this thing works but before we get started please make sure to hit that like button subscribe to my channel and if you have any questions any suggestions anything just put it in the comment let's get started so as always the best way to understand any of the token standards is to go through the EIPs. This is the EIP for ERC1155 standard which as you can see here is a multi token standard because one token can have multiple quantities. The biggest thing to understand over here is that this, stand, this standard allows us to create and manage multiple token types so that a single deployed contract a single instance of the contract can have both fungible and non-fungible tokens or some variation of that like semi-fungible tokens now why did we need to create such standard the reason was simple we were wasting a lot of gas so ethereum games started getting popular and these games usually comprised of ERC721 tokens and ERC20 tokens which are like a normal token, normal fungible tokens whereas ERC721 were normal non-fungible tokens. People were trying to trade with each other using OpenSea or other platforms and they always had to provide operator status or approval for their tokens to the underlying platforms again and again wasting a lot of gas so this standard was created so you can just approve this one single contract and all the tokens in it and then simply trade like you normally would so now how does it achieve this thing we'll just deep dive into it now if you see the specification uh, it defines an interface erc1155 which has like a bunch of events which we can skip for now what we're interested in are these functions so the first function that we see is safe transfer from and this function basically allows the from address to send to to address the token with this id and the amount of that specific token that we have to send so assume we have an erc20 token on this specific id so i know that was a little confusing so let me just break it down what happens in an ERC1155 contract is every token ID which means every ID from 1 to whatever is an NFT or a token in itself. So let's assume on token ID 1 there is a token with total supply of 100,000. So what we will do is basically put the value the number of tokens that we have to transfer from to this address the id will be one and the values will be in the number of tokens let's say 100 so 100 into whatever decimal number is those many tokens we will transfer using there and this is some extra data that we want to send now let's say on token id 2 we have an nft with just one quantity so there we will put the value as one the id as two and then from into like we want to do now the third thing let's say we have an nft with quantity of 30 now how do we have that let's just forget that for now but assume that we have and that is on id number three so then if we want to send two i two of those nfts from our address to to, to the two address we will enter the value two over here if you think a little deeply 
what you will realize is that an NFT is just an ERC20 token with the quantity 1. So ERC1155 treats, so ERC1155 treats every token in its contract as an ERC20 token. And then through clever use of metadata, we figure out whether this is an ERC20 token or is this an NFT or what. So this was safe transfer from, uh, we also have safe patch transfer from where we, s we send from to to a bunch of things. So we can have multiple IDs being sending and each ID can have multiple values that we are sending. So first ID we are sending 100, the second ID we are sending 1 and third ID we are sending let's say 5. Now this is where things get interesting. The balance of function, it tells us what is the balance of the owner for that specific ID. So as I told you, each ID is an ERC20 token or at least behaves like an ERC20 token, not exactly an ERC20 token. So if I own the token ID 1, the, the number of tokens of token ID 1, let's say I own 100 of them. So if I put my own address in ID 1 over here, it will return the balance as 100. Now let's say the token ID 2 is an NFT with one quantity and I don't own it. In that case, the value will be zero if I put my address and the token ID 2. And let's say the third is an, is, is an NFT with 50 total quantity, but I own only three. Uh, so the balance of will return three. Similarly, we have this method balance of batch where we enter arrays in place of single values. Now one method that we have over here is called set approval for all, which basically allows an operator to spend our tokens from this smart contract. And this is approved for all basically checks whether this owner has allowed the specific operator to spend their tokens. This approval method comes in ERC20 standard and ERC721 standard as well. So people used to approve all the all the contracts one by one and waste a lot of gas. Here we just do it once and we're done. So I know this would have been a little confusing. So please make sure you go back <laughs> and watch the part again because it really is important to understand what's going on over here. What essentially happens is we have a mapping with keys as the token IDs and the values as another mapping of ownership. So let's say the mapping has token ID 1. So corresponding to token ID 1, we will get another mapping of the ownership. The ownership mapping looks like owner's address as the key and the value would be the number of tokens that they own in that token ID. And that is how basically everything is figured out. We find the balance of using that map mapping. We save transfer from using that mapping. We reduce the tokens in the sender's mapping and increase the tokens in the receiver's mapping. So that's how ERC1155 sort of works. Now, how do we work with metadata over here? Now, as in ERC721, metadata is sort of optional over here as well. And this is how it works. We just need to define a function URI. This function takes in the token ID as its input and returns a URI which points to the metadata of this specific token. Now to optimize on gas even more, they have a way basically through which you just need to return with this kind of a response and the clients are supposed to then go to the specific IDs JSON file. Another thing that you can do is just return the correct file every time and waste gas, but that's fine. Or you can also return IPFS files for each or you can also return IPFS URIs for each specific token. Now what is supposed to go in the in the JSON that is pointed to by the URI function. So this is the format for that. Uh, we will have a name of that token. So if it's an ERC20 token, you put a name of the token. We have decimals over here, which helps us represent the value to the user. So let's say we have a token, which is 100,000 in nature, but it is divisible by 18 decimal places. So we will return 18 over here 
and each person who owns one token of that is actually owning 1 into 10 to the power 18 tokens pretty similar to how ERC20 tokens work if you're confused by that you can check out any ERC20 explainer videos I even I also have one so you can just check that out if you are looking at NFTs over here you the decimal point that you will return is probably zero because you don't want to divide that number by anything because one token over there means one item plus it's non-fungible so you can't really divide into points <laughs> unless you fractionalize it in which case uh, let's not go there the third thing on the list is description which basically describes the asset it's just an extension of name the fourth is image which points to the image of that token so for erc20 token it can have a logo for erc721 tokens it can actually have the art or nft jpeg or whatever pointed to by this key and the last point is properties which is like attributes that i had discussed in my previous video but this is how OpenSea or any other marketplace will figure out what are the traits attributes properties of this specific nft or token for that matter doesn't care and this is an example json file for that we can also do localization and a bunch of other things which are a little out of scope for today because we're just trying to understand how ERC1155 works. Now one interesting thing that they have decided on is to remove the symbol function uh, which is usually found in ERC20 and ERC721 standards and they have removed it because it's not something which is very useful anymore because everyone just works goes by the name and symbols are all the time clashing so they have removed that symbol function and i support their choice and another interesting thing that they have done is they have removed the name function as well and the name is actually now stored on the metadata so now we can actually localize the names of assets that are present in here pretty smart and then mostly they have a lot of things that probably are not useful for somebody like you but if you're serious about understanding just go through the whole document it's pretty informative and you will understand a lot of things about how the smart contracts are working out there and how are they doing some xyz thing that you've seen them do but you don't know how it works so now if you're in a hurry to deploy an erc1155 contract uh, it's already present over here in the wizard at open zeppelin you can just select ERC1155, enter the name, enter the URI that we had just discussed and probably do some mintable things and just open it in Remix and deploy it to your favorite chain. Or you can go through the GitHub for Open Zeppelin, go through the ERC1155 code and figure out how everything is working around. If you don't understand anything, don't worry. My next video will basically walk us through the code of ERC1155 and we will code up an ERC1155 NFT and deploy it probably to some testnet. After deploying that to some testnet, probably we'll also create a video around how to mint an ERC1155 or airdrop an ERC1155 token to the holders, how to use it in an application and figure out how much somebody owns and restrict access based on their ownership. Thank you so much for watching the video till the end. Uh, if you liked it, if you liked the video, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe and comment. Please comment. Let me know what you want to see next uh, after the ERC1155 series, of course. And I will try my best to cover that. Thank you once again. Hope to see you next week. Bye.